us now is Matthew Rozak. He's co-founder and chairman of Block, was an early investor in Coinbase and a lot of other crypto uh, companies. Matthew, thank you for joining us. First of all, very dramatic. What happened this weekend exactly? Well, thanks for having me. And um, <clears throat> yeah, we saw a lot of drama in Bitcoin over the weekend, uh, having its price drop from 60,000 to 51,000. And in Bitcoin and crypto, when Bitcoin catches a cold, uh, the, the the rest of the uh, market reacts and, and certainly it sneezed, the rest of the crypto market caught a cold and everything went down 15, 20 percent. Uh, has recovered to about 55,000. Uh, but in terms of what happened, um, there was a few dynamics over the weekend, whether it was uh, the Chinese mining, uh, uh, fear, uncertainty, a doubt on Twitter, some profit taking, it was a constellation of lots of events uh, that really drove the, the price down and it's recovered about halfway. It's a reminder that it, it can still be risky and rocky for individual investors. How much do you see retail as, as driving the bus here on some of these prices of cryptocurrencies like a Bitcoin or even a Dogecoin or a Coinbase stock? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at the broader market, you see... Um, people uh, getting more and more access to Bitcoin. Coinbase is the largest um, uh, crypto marketplace in the US and that provides more access for people to, uh, to get Bitcoin. And it is volatile. Uh, it's it's uh, gone over 670% over the last year. It's average IRR over the last 10 years since inception is about 200%, uh, but it's been a volatile uh, uh, path to get there. And so uh, it's different now because you have other participants uh, playing into Bitcoin. So there's, a, there's an underpin of institutional interest. And you see this in the uh, treasury of uh, MicroStrategy and Tesla, Square, PayPal, and others. Uh, and then you have uh, Wall Street uh, 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 players like Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, JP Morgan, uh, providing research and access to Bitcoin. So it's, it's the underpin uh, for Bitcoin is a lot different than it was certainly a year or three years ago when we saw much more volatile swings. Matthew, clearly uh, Bitcoin's performance has been very strong overall and, and the volatility r remains significant. But when you also <laughs> throw in the likes of Dogecoin and its extraordinary rise last week, even when it's on the up, are you looking at it thinking, gosh, I wish it would just calm down a little bit because this doesn't help the long term argument for these cryptos as being a, a genuine store of value? It's a it's a great point. Uh, you, you look at Dogecoin, which uh, was originally made as a copy of Bitcoin, and it, it was kind of a, a meme led uh, community. And and you, and you take a giant step back, uh, despite having a 400 uh, percent spike over the last um, week, and it's now valued at about 50 billion. The, the giant step back is you look at elements that are absolutely new. They're happening in real time. Look at Wall Street bets and GameStop. Uh, this is cooperative capital. These are uh, people that have access to trading. They have access to information. The way they communicate and collaborate between Reddit or Twitter or Discord are all new uh, avenues for uh, figuring out alpha or uh, thinking through what the next investment is. Uh, so, so it's less about Dogecoin for me and more about there's a, a new community that is altruistic, uh, uh, wants to make money, uh, and wants to have some fun along the way. And so, so with that, you're going to see uh, things like GameStop get rescued. You're going to see other uh, corporate uh, uh, citizens that aren't doing well on either a carbon footprint or some kind of a human rights dynamic to, to have an effect on that. And so uh, these folks are voting with their wallets and uh, uh, are a new player in financial services. So... Part of the part of the problem this weekend, or part of what caused the price drop, drop Matthew, were rumors <laughs> about regulation potentially from the U.S. Treasury around money laundering. What what if we actually start to see some real regulation here after cryptocurrency? And and it really could come from all sides, governments, central banks around the world. I mean, Bitcoin is one of the most regulated uh, assets in the world. It's it's got very uh, 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 good clarity from the IRS, from Treasury, from the CFTC, SEC, uh, and there's a whole bunch of other cryptocurrencies that need more definition. So I, I think as, as a country, uh, if you think about uh, how we approached the internet, the early internet, and became a market leader in that, uh, this government uh, and this country has a real opportunity 
to be a thought leader and, and using this technology and these new rails for money uh, to its advantage. And, and I, I view this as almost a, uh, a, a an imperative for America to get behind this, uh, talk to their regulators, uh, members of Congress, et cetera. And uh, I've been trying to educate uh, DC and, and, and other um, regulators about uh, the benefits of crypto and blockchain technology for, for over a half a decade. It's a slow process. Nothing moves fast in, uh, in DC. Technology far outpaces the ability for regulators to uh, get their arms around this. But engagement and uh, proper discussions is uh, the time is now to do that. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.